Hello, my name is Tanya Harris. I am the course leader for Exploring Collections and I'm working with Wakefield Mental Health Museum. And we've been working together on two Exploring Collections courses and there'll be a future curating course, followed by an exhibition of artist work in response to the collection, both digitally and then face to face. And I'm really thankful to be joined by Laura Miles, who um, will introduce herself now. Hello everyone. Yes, I'm Laura Miles. I'm the communications manager at Outside In, which means it's my great privilege to share all the work that we get up to as a charity and all the amazing things our artists do, including the projects that Tanya's just mentioned. So uh, today we wanted to go through some examples of how we can share the wonderful work that's happening in these projects. And I've got some previous ones that we hope will spark some ideas of the things that you might want to share or see the possibilities that would be out there. So the ones I'm going to show you are from a project called the Vaudry Archive Project. This is a project that happened in Chichester, West Sussex. And it also explored collections um, from the asylum that used to be in Chichester. Vaudry is the name of the doctor that worked there. And you will be able to see the amazing things that he kind of collected and explored. So these are the diaries from the artists that took part. And I'll go back to the start because that tends to be a good place to begin. So each session we had a different person write about them. Um, not everybody wanted to share in this way and that was totally fine. I really want to make it clear that the sharing is totally led by artists and we're very passionate that it's artist voice that takes the lead on this. So at no point will we say, we want to know this about that. So we had celebration events. We had personal connections to the project itself with family members that had been in the institution. We had visits to welcome that people wrote about. This is probably one of my favorite headlines, toilet roll letters and other treasures, because it just went to show the diversity that they were exploring in the collection. We found that artists might have connected with a person and finding out more about their stories or with an object ones that have come up on recent courses from the new dialogues one include things like locked boots or exploring padded cells and how they might not be quite what people perceive them to be so all of these can be found on the patient artworks website and also what we have are project um, diaries from the projects that have taken place already for new dialogues so these examples include the patient's voices and this one is written by cara and it was about exploring the narratives within it. This one was exploring portraits and Steve produced his own portrait based on the Victorian photographs he had seen in the collection. And as I mentioned, this one was about reimagining the padded cell and Ali used photographic works to kind of turn them into magical seascapes and really change how you might think about the space. So the thing now is obviously to think about what you might like to share. And it could vary, like we said, from an object to a person, to a painting, to your own responses and your kind of visual diaries that you might be creating during it. What also we want to think about is the things you might want to consider, because obviously sharing these things, it's by the nature of the topic, it's, it can be difficult and it can be triggering and we have to be mindful of that. So things that I can pull on from previous experiences, because I am um, a reformed journalist, shall we say, are things like how much information do you want to put out there? And also the fact that you can't really delete things on the Internet. They might disappear, but the trail is always going to be there. So one thing we had to think about a lot when I was in the newsroom is if we had a missing person appeal. We'd be contacted a lot by the police for this, because obviously it's a good way of getting the message out there. But we would also make sure we were doing best practice, because once we said this person is missing, this person is vulnerable, help us find them. Even when that person might be found and have a perfectly happy ending to that story, when people might be applying for jobs in the future, a little Google search of your name would pull up, oh, well, you know, they might be a flight risk, they might go missing on us. And that has ramifications we wanted people to be aware of and the responsibility we took seriously. But that obviously is about just understanding that 
and kind of looking at how you might want to explore things in different ways that might not have those kind of ramifications. So I hope that's a good start and maybe a good introduction. And obviously we'll share the links with the um, existing diaries if that's something you would look at. We'll also share my contact details. So if you have a, oh, well, what about this? Then I love those questions and they're often a great place to start. Do you have any advice, thank you so much, Laura, about artists as they're going through the Exploring Collections course currently, how they gather information and share. So for example, artists might want to record and try and reflect on what, they, what they're particularly interested in, in terms of an object or a theme or a story or their research into some, some um, a subject that might be in the archives. Do you have any advice about whether or not they collate and ask you to give feedback before things go live? How do we um, ensure there's a really um, positive dialogue between outside in and communications with us? Because I know that the content can also be shared then on the mental health museum site, on Glenside um, Hospital Museum site for those taking part in that course. And there's also the Art Extraordinary course in Glasgow. So there's numbers of options of where our outside in artists who are working on courses can share their blogs, their visual diaries, their journals, whether or not it's audio, video, images, writing, sound, a collection. So they don't lose the thread of their research and interests along the ways and their personal responses. But whether or not you think uploading and having a blog that's regularly uploaded or towards the end of the course, what, what would you say would be um, an approach that artists take? This is going to be the worst possible answer, but it's so much down to the artist. I think from previous experience of doing diaries like this, the records might come as poetry. They might come as a postcard. They might come as kind of fully completed, almost essay-like works. I think things to consider when you're thinking of the reader is often a good place to start. So would somebody be able to sit there, you know, when they're on their train or they're waiting for something and the, the lives that we have now and do a whole 600 word blog? Or would it be interesting to split that into three? And then if they want to read more, they can. A bit like how you might have time to watch one episode of your favourite programme, or you might make a wet Sunday of it and watch a whole series. It's kind of nice to think how the reader might take that information on. In terms of timings, I would always be a bit advocate for trying to do it as the journey happens, because I think it's so interesting to see where things might start and then be able to follow them through to what the final results might be. And obviously, with a lot of the courses we're talking about, hopefully that would end up in people coming to the exhibitions as well and perhaps following the curation stories. So I've been working um, with some artist curators for an exhibition we've got coming up called Kindred Spirits. And what we've started with is just a simple two line question about what people were attracted to the course by, why they wanted to be involved and what their hopes are for the final result. And I think answering those two questions is really nice because it kind of gives you a framework. And even if the answers at the end are completely different, it shows that journey of the project. And when it comes to sharing with the other websites, um, I would like to keep it kind of minimal in terms of the artists having to consider all that kind of thing. So I am more than happy to liaise with all of the partners and make sure that the content we're putting together will be suitable across the board. I will never try to put too many rules in because I think it's important that, yeah, if artists want to respond with a painting, I'm not going to force them to write 200 words because, as we know, pictures can speak many words. Um, but I will check with the partners to make sure there's certain things that they might need, you know, captions in format, things like that. But that's why I do comms. That's not for the artists to have to worry about if they don't want to. Thank you. Um, there is the opportunity for artists to link their research to their gallery on Outside In and also to upload content to their gallery as they go along in the course. So if artists are making creative artistic work in response to the collection, they can upload 
and there'll also be um, a digital exhibition from January next year, where we're hoping that artists from all of the courses, exploring collections courses, both in, in Bristol, in Glasgow and in Wakefield, um, can share their work digitally that might not be the same as the work that they then submit for a physical face-to-face -face exhibition that are happening kind of mid next year. Do you have any um, suggestions about, I, I, I mean, my rec recommendation would be that artists animate in terms of provide some information in the description of that artwork on their gallery. So as well as having their blog, they've also got the opportunity to upload artworks, creative processes, and they can have that content and descriptions about each work on their gallery. They don't have to just use the kind of blog and the um, new dialogues um, platform and the kind of, what do we call it? The microsite yeah. within, that sits within outside in. Um, so, there are ways to link and more audience might come to their work through their gallery, through how they tag their work, through descriptors and also through potentially somebody visiting the, um, the museum site or the Art Extraordinary site and then finding them and their gallery on the Outside In site because this is quite a high profile project for Outside In and funded by Heritage Lottery Fund. So I think that this is not every Exploring Collections course that we've run with Outside In has this kind of um, opportunity to share work online and within the website of a collection as well as on Outside In site and their gallery. So is there anything you can give advice about in terms of promoting their work as artists? Very much so. So what would be ideal is when people are talking to me about the blogs they want to create, if they have a artist gallery with us to let me know that, and obviously most of them will do, uh, sometimes they're under different names. So it's also helpful to know who, who they might be under as the gallery name. And then I will make sure in the blog itself they are tagged. So if they people come to us to the blog, they can then go to the galleries of the artists. What we've also done and obviously found that people use social media a lot to share the journeys and the works that they've done. So what we've done previously is come up with hashtags for each course so you can kind of follow the thread that way as well. What's great about using the hashtags and what we found with the virtual galleries previously is that we can use that hashtag to pull things through to the website. So even if every bit of the artwork doesn't make it into the virtual gallery that you mentioned, we can do a stream beneath it that shows all the works that are related to it. And they're obviously, the journey doesn't stop necessarily when the courses and exhibitions do. I think if something sparks inspiration, there may well be work that you keep working on. And it's nice to keep that record as well. And again, that's just another way of people finding it. Um, in communications, we're very keen on journeys because we're, we're aware that people might come to things because they know of an artist that's taking part in something or they might have found the blog or they might be on the partner's website and it's about keeping those things in mind so think about where people might start and think where we want to take them and where they can discover more um, it's similar to that kind of one episode versus a whole series thing you know if people have got the time and have the interest we want to keep them interested and show them more things so yes, hashtags are great for that and we can work with each course leader to come up with one and do the research to make sure it's not pulling in anything too random that might screw the results. Um, and also we can also look at tagging um, when we use it on Instagram because we share a lot of the content that we have across different platforms. We also share things in our newsletters. So we have a digital monthly newsletter and we have just started a quarterly print magazine as well. So we tend to reflect the work as the charity in these different formats um, to go with the magazine because we want to make sure our communications can be reached and um, enjoyed in any format people might like. We have two podcasts as well. So we've got an audio only podcast and then we have an audio visual podcast. So again, like I say, it's totally up to what the artist might like to be involved with, but it might be nice to know those avenues are there if people would like to talk more about them in different formats. And obviously each of those reach different audiences as well. Thank you. And I appreciate, although that might be a lot to take in now for the artist, that their 
some of the artists that um, have, I've been speaking to have wanted to tag the work and also link in. And so for those artists that have an appetite for it, it's really great that they know they can go through the course leader to reach Laura, or we'll also provide an email with contact direct for Laura if they want to do that. Um, the other, um, just a sideline is that it's possible that an artist wants to communicate and share their journey, but doesn't want to do it under their own name and wants to use a pseudonym. It might be, and their galleries under their name or a pseudonym, but it might be they want to separate their research and their creative journey and research journey on this project with their profile, their artist profile. And we are, um, we can, um, uh, you know, they can choose a pseudonym and we don't have to link it to their gallery website if they prefer. We'd much rather hear their voice, their creative and research journey and their story and find a way to communicate that. And if they want to have their identity protected for any reason, then that's absolutely fine. And we'll work with Laura to do that. And hopefully you've got the sense now that Laura comes out of journalism and will have a very clear understanding of how to do that and give any artist advice if they choose to go that route. Um, there are some um, issues that hopefully within the courses that you're on will come up in terms of copyright. So. If you're on the course in Wakefield, there are permissions needed if any images are used that are coming from the archives. And I'm sure that within the Art Extraordinary collection, there are copyright issues to do with the artwork and what can be shared from what I understand. And um, the Glenside Museum has the benefit of having the curator as the course leader. So Stella Mann is the expert in in that and what can be um, what the artists want to ask. So please let us know through the course leaders, through whatever, if you want to use an image that's not yours or you've been inspired by to check that we have copyright to be able to share that on the outside insight. Is there anything else, Laura, that is worth sharing um, in terms of the, you know, anything that you wanted to kind of alert us to? I think picking up on the copyright, um, obviously what we've dealt with a lot in the past is very much that. And the, the, I think the nature of this project, and we found it particularly with Vaudry, was the potential conflicts or confusions that were caused by the question over, is it art or is it medical records? Because obviously they are treated very differently. And we worked a lot with the Welcome Collection because they, they have extensive experience in this area. Generally speaking, copyright lasts about 70 years. It can get passed on to family members as if you were leaving any kind of item anyway. So what we need to do is adhere to best practice. Best practice can be trying our best to find out who the copyright holder is or if there is copyright, or it would be something like putting down a takedown policy. That means if anyone flags an issue with it, we will act as quickly as we can to rectify that. I mean, that covers us in a lot of ways. So I, as um, has been mentioned, it's kind of about if you see a barrier to the sharing, whether it is using your own name or not being sure about a picture, then let us know because we could easily create um, a gallery under a pseudonym if you wanted to explore this area of work even more. We have a lot of artists that work under pseudonyms for a whole array of reasons. And I think it's important, like has been mentioned, that that isn't something that gets in the way of the story being told and the expression being able to be put out there. And similarly with copyright, I mean, I have a lot of boring books I can read to try and find the answers about this, obviously, from my previous experience. And we will do our best to do that to make sure all the supporting material can be there and can be shared. So, yeah, hopefully it doesn't sound too woolly, but it's basically a if you want to share it, we'll do our best to help you in all formats and in any way. Thank you. And I think it's really great to hear that your your um your take and mine are so similar as an educator or facilitator, um, trying to capture the journey that any um, artists are going through, where at the beginning it's quite daunting. There's just how, how do you get into this kind of huge, huge area of um, research, but also being on the outside, as it were, for outside in, and then gradually going in. And the journey that the artists on the first course where we were in lockdown and we and the, 
the, the museum that we were working with was closed due to the pandemic and the artists were having to kind of rec make requests of what they were interested in and work really personally with the curatorial team to try and find those objects. That journey of discovery both for the curatorial team and the artist was really quite extraordinary for me to be a witness to or an observer to. And also the expertise that the artists have by the end of the course about their chosen research area and how focused they became about it and now can talk so, you know, um, wisely about it. And I think that journey, trying to capture it whilst it's happening rather than in reflection and summation is really key because it keeps it alive for us, also for, as you say, the audience. And to take us on their journey is really um, what we want with all kinds of learning and access. So I'm really grateful for your guidance because it, it mirrors ours as course leaders too. So that's really helpful. I'm so grateful to be involved in these projects. I find them absolutely fascinating and I love seeing how a group of people looking at the same thing, potentially in the same room or virtually, can come up with so many different interpretations of it. I think, like you say, it can be daunting at the start. And it's probably similar to, you know, when you walk into a gallery and there's this, all this art looking at you, but then that little painting in the corner catches your eye and you go and stare at it and that's your next half an hour. I think it's remembering you, you will get to that point where there is a focus and there is a, clearly a thing that is sparking. And that might be that it's everything. It might be the kind of chaos and confusion of it that is the very inspiration itself, or it might be one tiny object you could put in a shoebox if you wanted to. Um, but it's yeah, it's very much about embracing that journey and having it as a record for yourselves as well. Of the part of this is about giving other people insight, not only to your work as artists and the amazing skills you're going to be gathering as a part of it, but also for yourself because you might have the end paintings at the end of the journey or the sculptures or the sketches, but it's nice to be able to work out how you got there and remember how you got there, because it might be that actually stage three of the journey then is another branch to a whole other journey of um, experimenting and exploring. And it's nice to be able to have those as other jumping points should you want them later on. Thank you so much for your time, Laura, and your advice. Really appreciate it. And we'll make sure that you, um, all the artists have contact details for um, Laura Miles, but also for um, to go through if they want any other members of our Exploring Collections teams. Thank, Thank you. you. So Thank you.